Okay. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you be seated? Okay. Hey, Mr. Vice Chairman. Okay. Sue and the Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order extended certain privileges to the open meeting law. General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations. Number of people that may gather in one place. The following meeting, Greater New Bedford Regional Location Technical High School School Committee will be conducted via remote participation. We will post an audio recording, audio video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of these proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting on the school's website and local cable access. Read the public comment section. Yes, please. Okay. Are there any public comments? Comments are welcome to the public comment segment. Forward comments to the recording secretary at Maria Fadette at GN. BVT.edu, no later than 3 p.m. May 10th, 2021. Okay, you're all set with that. Okay, item number two is roll call. Yeah. Hey, Walsh. Yeah. Here. Here. Marlon. Here. Ribeiro. Here. Again? Yeah. The item three is the reading of the notice of the meetings. Okay. Just to notify you that the regular meeting, the Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School District meeting will be held on Tuesday, May 11, 2021, at 1121 Ashley Boulevard, New Bedford, Massachusetts, at 6.30 p.m. in the Student Forum. Okay. Item number four. With public comments, we haven't received any new public comments for this meeting. We'll go with that. Let's see. Item five is student recognition. It will be handled by our superintendent, Mr. O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Durgan. I'd like to speak on behalf of not only the faculty and the student body, along with the school committee here at Gray New Bedford Boat Tech. It was been very important to me as your superintendent to recognize a handful of individuals that are here this evening, especially during these adverse times. If there's an ever a time in, in, in our world, in our society, Sorry. Example of perseverance. Our entire student body, along with our faculty and staff and society, emulate that. But a handful of students gone above the call of duty in both their academic and vocational programs. They are the shining stars who are going to receive many of the accolades that I speak about tonight. First off this evening, I'd like to welcome Sarah Lewis. Sarah Lewis is a medical assisting student from the town of Dartmouth. She's presently a junior. She will be taking over the responsibilities of Ethan Mori uh, for our June meeting because Ethan is graduating June 4th and Sarah Lewis will be getting the baton from Ethan working with Kim Fortin and the student council. She works very hard academically and vocationally and represents the medical assisting program and our student body very well. Welcome to Sarah Lewis. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna read a handful of names this evening. First, 
the student recognition regards to CBT vocational programs. The first student this evening is our model outstanding student recipient. The gentleman is an electrical student and he represents our entire senior class with the MAVA group, Mr. Sean Aruda, is a baseball player on the student council. I will read his bio in a few, in a few moments. The MBA Vocational Award nominee is Chelsea Ma Martinez, who could not be here this evening. She too is a medical assisting student here at Grade New Bedford Voc Tech. The fourth person, is the Walter J. Markham Award recipient. Natalie Portal is here this evening. She, all, she too is part of our medical assisting program and I will read her bio in a few minutes. Beyond these other student rec uh, recognition awards, we have what we call the Academic All-Star Awards, which are the five best students in this institution. We're, I want everyone to be mindful they compete with the South Coast Conference All-Stars with various comprehensive high schools and reminding everyone our students receive their academic instruction with half the time. Uh, representing our academic All-Stars, first and foremost is our one and only Ethan Mori from our program in web design. Mr. Jacob Tavares to my left, who's an engineering student, Natalie Portal, also an academic all-star from medical, John Aruda, dual award winner from our electrical program, and Ruby Loro from our visual design program. Would like to take a moment, if the school committee permits, to read a few of these bios this evening, because quite frankly, these students deserve it. First off, I remind you, Sean Aruda, Sean Aruda have been involved at Mechanics Hall Worcester ceremony with over 700 people with Tuxedo Award and that due to COVID had to be canceled. More so the MABA Award nominee Chelsea Martinez would have represented us at a banquet ceremony in Sturbis. Mr. Sean Aruda, a senior in our electrical technology program, has been chosen as one of the outstanding vocational award winners this year. Sean has a GPA of 4.33 and is a member of the National Honor Society. Sean was named to both the Dean's List, the Principal's List for Academic Excellence. Sean also was named to both of the Leadership Award, John Abigail Adams Scholarship. Sean also received the Skills USA Fall State Leadership Award. The Mass Higher Award, the Wayland City Baseball League Sportsmanship Award. He has mastered electrical technology tooling, technical drawing, lift operations. Sean has also obtained the OSHA 10 hour certification. In addition to his academic background, Sean has, Sean has been involved in numerous school and extracurricular activities. He has served on the Student Council, Vice President of the Speech Club, Skills USA and worked as a teaching assistant for the Great New Bedford Vocational Technical High School Electrical Program as a teaching assistant. During the summer, he works as part of our student group with the facilities department. During the pandemic, Sean has worked with his career in New Bedford, so the community did not miss out on a, my apologies. Sean worked with his career and technical teacher in order to wire the holiday display at Kalaski Common Park so that the community did not miss out on a very popular holiday tradition. Sean also volunteers at Activities Director of Vacation Bible School to Feeding the Homeless, worked with many community members with the Prince Henry Society, the New Bedford Half Marathon. Sean is a great public speaker, saxophone player, and fitness enthusiast. Throughout his career at Vogue Tech, Sean has made it clear that he is focused, tenacious, diligent, he is energetic, accountable, attentive to detail. He is a leader in the classroom, both in the academic and vocational program, the athletic field, and a school representative. Shard's future plan is to um, 
major in physics at Westfield State University with a, a secondary education minor. Congratulations, Sean. Natalie Quartal is a senior in the medical assisting program at Grand Rapids Bo Tech. She's been selected as the winner of the Walter Markham Award, holding a 4.34 GPA. Sixth in her class throughout her time as a student at Bo Tech, she has demonstrated diligence, discipline in all areas of school life. She's been awarded several Dean's List and Principal's Award, and also a member of our National Honor Society. Natalie also is an active participant in her own education during the pandemic. pandemic. She took two Spanish classes at Bristol Community College. Despite her busy schedule and involvement in extracurricular activities, she has managed to be exemplary in everything she does. She teaches catechism for the last five years, which she reflected has allowed her to grow exponentially. To know Natalie is to know that she is a brilliant young lady, a very bright fruit future. She's been accepted to the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth Nursing Program. Upon graduation of this program, continues. she plans on continuing her education as a pediatric nurse practitioner. Congratulations, Natalie. Twenty twenty one valedictorian is Ethan Mori. Ethan is an outstanding student graduating from our programming and web design program with a four point four six GPA. He's a very kind young man. He's able to collaborate effectively with his peers, teachers, both in the classroom and outside. He manages his time efficiently in order to meet the deadlines in class and keep up with all his many responsibilities, both in our school and our community. He is president of the student council, student rep on the GNBBT school committee, member of the Business Professionals of America, participant in Origami Club, a student mentor and cashier at Market, Market Basket since September 2018. He's received awards second in the state for advanced spreadsheet applications in BPA, second in the state for database application competition BPA. EPA State Merit Scholar, five beer awards, one most valuable beer award, fourth in the state for database applications, BPA sophomore year. Ethan plans to major in computer science at Northeastern University. Congratulations, Ethan. Twenty twenty one celebratorian is Jacob Tavares. Jacob is an Intelligent, respectful, dedicated, hardworking young man with a 4.44 GPA in our competitive engineering program. Jacob has formed a wonderful working rapport with his teachers, peers throughout his high school career. His hard work has earned him numerous awards since he entered Grady Bedford Vogue Tech. As a freshman, freshman, he received the Outstanding Student Award for ranking in the top six of his class of 560 freshmen. In 2018, he participated and earned the gold medal in Schools USA Fall State Leadership Conference. He also has been awarded the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship, as well as the Chancellor Scholarship based on merit at UMass Dartmouth. Jacob plans to attend UMass Dartmouth in the fall, majoring in computer science. Congratulations, Jacob. This is just a small token of my appreciation for all your hard work. I'm sure all of you will be represented at some point at our, at our student award ceremony, which is June 2nd. I'd like to take this time to open it up to the chair or any school committee member for comment. Yes, Mrs. Romero. Just want to make a comment that um, being proud of every single one of you. This has probably been the most challenging faced um, for the staff and the student in our school. This is probably the hardest thing that you've had to do. Giving up a lot, just sheeny in, no proms, 
activities that normally come along with this. And I just want to say we're so very proud of each and every one of you. And hopefully, I heard I want some of you to come back and take part and be part of our staff at this school at, in the future if you could. Um, just I mean, it's just overwhelming. This has been the try. I you made history to do all the things you're doing this year and to achieve what you've achieved. We're totally proud of you. Anyone else? I just want to say that I'm really proud of our students and uh, hopefully I, I have no doubt that they're going to be very successful in their future plans. And it would be really nice if once we get back to uh, the live dinners for our, our advisory board, if they could come back and let us know what they've done. I would love to hear that. And uh, could everyone please give another round of applause for everybody? Coming week, and I thank you for being here, Sarah. Um, we we wanted you to come here tonight for our school committee meeting. Um, within the within the next few weeks, I'll meet with you one on one with Tim Thornton, and we'll discuss the next process. Uh, we we just wanted to welcome you tonight to the school committee, and uh, at the end of this evening, we'll be wishing Ethan well. And work with you in the next few weeks to get prepared for the June school committee. Mr. Jurian? Yes, I, I just want to say that I think that it's incredible that um, the academic standards that you folks have put forward and also the vocational. And um, as uh, my colleague says here, we're so very proud of you. And you have all the tools you need to move forward. and. Your families, I'm sure, are very proud of you all. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jacob, when you go home, you can ask your father. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, next time of business, I'm not going to announce yet because I want to stand up. And I want to show my respect. Oh boy, you get through a very difficult year. You actually made it easy for me. For all the work you've done in particular, Mr. Fred Toomey, my vice chair, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you very much. Good Okay, now item number six, we're going to do election of offices for the 2021-22 year. Second. I have a motion to be made for the nomination of the chairman to the Green Book Tech School Committee. I make a motion that Fred Toomey become the chairman next school year. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Motion is made for the nomination for vice chair for the Green and Bedford School Committee. Dr. Mullen, vice chair. Second. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Regional School District has voted for the chairman and vice chair. Vote total for chairman. Five. Vote total for the vice chair is five. <laughs> the chairman takes over. Chair. Hey, thank you very much. First order of business, really. I'd like to thank Mr. Durrigan for his efforts in 
this try this past trying year is accomplished over this year and working with Mr. Watson, Mr. O'Brien, and Mr. Watt on uh, the various issues and problems that have arisen, not only because of COVID, but all the other stuff that's come up. So thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Durrigan, for your time and efforts. I would also like to thank Ethan Moray for his efforts in representing the school and the student body here at Hope. You did an excellent job. Hopefully you will continue with your studies and it is a progressive and aggressive as you were here studies at Northeastern. So congratulations and thank you. Okay, so yes, that's my next step. Thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, I'd like to make a motion for secretary. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Michael Watson is our new secretary for the committee. We have a motion on the floor to appoint Mr. Michael Watson as secretary to the regional school district effective July 1st. Second. We have a second. Anything on the question? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Moving right along. Okay, reading acceptance of the minutes of the April 13th and April 26th meetings. Motion will be in order. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to approve both the April 13th and 26th minutes. Okay, on the question. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. We also need a motion for executive session. Separate motion. I make a motion to accept the uh, minutes of the executive section and to be disclosed when the matter is when the matter is solved. Ready? Motion maybe second. On the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Approval of bills, including a backup, is a warrants 20 10, amount of $7,011,246.52. Would be an honor to approve. And to approve. Made and seconded on the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Parent communications. Um, this is basically Superintendent uh, Watson who will bring the membership up to date. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, we uh, also made some phone calls this week. Uh, Sharon Pino, I continue to thank her for her efforts uh, in reaching out to parents. She began that work from last Friday's POSIP survey. She'll continue that throughout this week. Uh, we also continue to send out the weekly parent uh, principal's letter updating uh, all parents and stakeholders, students about upcoming activities and events at the school as we wind down. I would like to uh, just add to the committee that at the June session, we will be providing a one year kind of summary on the POSIP surveys. If you if you know, we've been running these all year. We will provide an updated end of year summary uh, at our June session um, in conjunction with the climate survey that we're going to be launching in the next few days. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Are there any questions of Mr. Watson on this POSIP survey? Communication. No questions. The motion be in order to approve. I make a motion to approve them on file. Second. Made and second. Any question? All those in favor? Opposed? So voted. April attendance report. Uh, Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Um, in your packet this evening, rescue for the last month due to the um, vaccines, both uh, faculty members and staff working on the highlights is full in service school, both students academically and vocationally. What we keep in social distancing. Doing a great job with our attendance to the professionals and teachers and just move forward. I can't thank the faculty and staff and their welcoming attitude to our students uh, each and every day, but especially welcoming the students back in the academic, full academic instruction. 
kudos to um, everyone's efforts. Any questions? Motion be in order to. Motion made, seconded. If there any question, if not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Uh, Mr. O'Brien again, May Honison report. Thank you, Mr. Julie. I need to do a shout out to Mr. Ruder and the facility management team and the custodial staff for their efforts or their continual efforts of keeping this place squeaky clean health and safety guidelines. I also need to do another shout out today. Without the efforts of uh, Mr. Jeff Fortin, Mr. Joe Aruda, Mr. Chris Perry, and Mr. Brent Aguiar, they literally, literally have worked around the clock seven days a week with many of the FMX initiatives with plexiglass uh, stations for not only the administrative assistance to our science labs, to our English classes, making the appropriate changes in our vocational program for us to be ready on Monday. We are, we are a small city here at Brady Bedford Vote Tech, being one of the largest vocational schools in the state of Massachusetts, but with a team effort, in, in especially the carpentry teachers and their efforts in building these uh, mock stations for our various programs, and if you look no further in the, the auditorium, presently we are feeding the entire school, starting with lunch shifts at 1019 and ending somewhere around, I think, 120. We have a Chase Canopy tent with 80 or 90 students there. We have the student forum, the extension, the full cafeteria, the main lobby, Laurie Lehman and the cafeteria team have set up a mock lunch station there in the carpentry teachers design trace trace system for students to be able to eat and um, have a, a beautiful lunch in our auditorium and that those space in out of the box thinking has allowed us to basically try to run school as regular as can be also in the Addison report there's information for one of the step forward is our beautiful courtyard in the front if you look we forget it. We finished. We begin finishing the, the last phase of the project. Uh, at some point, if you could take notice in the front entrance of the school, and students are putting a uh, sprinkler system with low voltage lighting and electrical, and, and the plantings are beautiful to uh, continue with uh, making this look like first class. College and University campus. Kudos to Deborah Ruder and his team overseeing that. Mr. Watson on the academic front. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, just real quickly, I wanted to um, highlight the work of the attendance department this year. Certainly, COVID uh, 19 has presented a number of challenges to our teachers and, and staff, and, and they continue to rise every day. Um, and I'll talk about those folks in one second. But I also want to recognize Mrs. Nobrieger and Mrs. Martin in the attendance office. This uh, has created challenges for them too. Students being present and virtually present and absent and virtually absent. Um, students that have been placed on quarantine. Uh, all of that needs to be accurately reported as part of the student information management system that we report to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And so uh, both Shannon um, and Darlene have done exemplary work uh, in the attendance department this year. And I just wanted to, to, to spend this month's uh, report kind of highlighting those efforts. And secondly, um, yesterday we welcomed back all students uh, to full in-person learning, both in CVTE and academics. Um, of course, not without any, any glitches. And I just wanna publicly recognize and thank the teachers for their resilience in trying to work with us to make sure that that experience is as positive as we can for our kids. Uh, the, the welcome in, the entrance, uh, yesterday was absolutely phenomenal. Dr. Larkin, Mrs. McCann, um, and several other folks, Kathy Chase and, and the team around advisors, did a, uh, Jen Gasper did an excellent job uh, decorating the facility. Uh, Scott Parker and the band were out there welcoming them in. It was a, a terrific experience to welcome kids back and hopefully get us on the path uh, to a more normal learning environment. And so encouraging, and I just want to extend my heartfelt thanks to the entire school community for their efforts 
um, in welcoming students back to Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech. Thank you. Questions of Mr. Watson or Mr. O'Brien? Yeah, so I, okay, so for Academy B, the Lighthouse Cafe is up and running with a delicious takeout menu, and the bakery is now making advanced cakes and pastries, much to the delight of our staff. Sydney Calderon is participating in the Johnston Wales Advanced Placement Program. This program allows our students to finish their senior year at Johnston and Wales and to complete the, complete the freshman year of college simultaneously. We also have two junior students starting the process for next year. Really childhood education, the little ones are back five days a week. They're very excited to be in school. Junior class had, held a wedding for Q and A as a creative way to explain why the letters Q is almost always followed by a U. The legal and protective students are making use of the fire hose mannequins and practicing different rescue skills. These mannequins were a joint project with the HVAC, carpentry, and visual design students. And after months of hard work, as frontline workers at Alden Court, the nurse assisting students sat for their CNA exam. I'm proud to say that all 14 students passed the exam. Sophomore medical assistant students have been working on their physical therapy curriculum and have been walking around the building with various simulated ailments to experience the disabilities firsthand. And some about the garden, but Mr. Brian already brought that up. So in our Skills USA, we had 42 students representing Great New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School and their career and technical areas for the State Leadership Conference. Gold medalists were Matt Soares, cabinet making, advisor, Joe Arruda. Michaela Barrera, early childhood education, advisors, Deborah Brightman, Yasmin Playplay Vincent. Sophia D. Almeida, Exploratory Project Demo, Advisor Ron Quinton, Cassie DePina, and Alexa Almeida, Non Traditional Portfolios. The advisor is Patty Allen. A silver medalist, Abigail Souza, Basic Healthcare. The advisor is Mary Beth Vargas, Ryan Tremblay, and Reniki Sanuta. So I will do that again. Reniki. Send Gunta. Community Action Project. Advisor Stacy Almeida, Dominic DeSintos, Criminal Justice, Advisor Patty Allen, Jacob DeVaz, and Aiden Sylvia. Precision Leja Imogen, Advisor Robert Sutherland, Amber Thomas, Alexia Almeida, Magdalena Alicio Lopez, Promotional Bulletin Board, Advisor Patty Allen. A bronze medalist, Annalise Appleby, Career Choice Commentary, Advisor Ron Quinn, Sarah Lopes, Health Occupations, Professional Portfolio, Advisor Aaron Marcotte, Dara Pereiro, Job Skills Demonstration Open, Advisor Lori Russell Pelsu, Ava Silva, Nia Rodericks, Safety Poster, Advisor Ron Quinn, Angelie Semido, Sticker Design, Advisor Ron Quinton, Tara Costa, State Officer Elect, Advisor Lori Russell Pelsu, Haley Clapp, Casey Tapina, Abigail Simmons, and Kelsey Urell, National Voting Delegates, Advisor Lori Russell Pelsu. We are extremely proud and impressed with the students who attended the Skills USA State Conference during this unprecedented time. Each student played leadership which will surely bring them success in the future. That's my answer. Are there any questions of Mr. Watt, Mr. Watson, or Mr. O'Brien? Motion to be an honor to accept the A. Honison report. Motion received the reports and put them on file. Second. Second. Motion made and second. And put on the question. All those in favor? Hold, so hold. Mr. Moray, one last time. Hello. 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 So uh, it's been a jam packed month. Um, but to begin, uh, over the past few months, uh, the class advisors and officers uh, have been hard at work to plan events for the seniors 
since they're graduating. Um, first and foremost, there has been a vote. Uh, it has been decided amongst the senior class that the senior event, instead of prom due to COVID violations, will be uh, an AMC Hollywood premiere night. Uh, it'll be a really cool red carpet event. So you'll go, uh, it's red carpet walk up, you'll get your picture taken, there'll be raffles, you can get snacks, prizes, you'll be able to interact with the senior class. Um, and then you can also get your uh, picture taken, pretty nice. And then once again, you watch a movie um, through AMC, which is a really cool senior event, and it's a different take than prom, and it's a nice, innovative thing. Um, since seniors are graduating so soon, um, there's an opportunity for anybody to acknowledge any senior that they please, their favorite senior, a senior that they think needs it, um, and then you can record a video acknowledging, praising, celebrating that senior, and then it will be posted around the school website and social media, just with morale. Um, May 10th yesterday uh, was welcome back to school for the entire school. Um, welcoming every student back to full person. Uh, there were decorations, a live band in the front, um, and many staff welcoming students back. And it was really cool to see all of the really nice, just welcome kind of home ceremony type. Uh, it really boosted morale for the students, and the students really like to see it. Welcome, like, be back. And when it's very nostalgic, uh, see that happen. And the class officers and advisors, once again, uh, have worked together to hold a senior spirit week. Uh, and it'll be from May 24th to May 28th. May 24th will be decorating your car uh, to represent school spirit. And seniors will be encouraged to wear their school shirt to show pride in GMBVT. May 25th and May 26th will be a senior yearbook signing uh, and a senior picnic. Um, and then to end the Senior Spirit Week will be May 28th with Senior Sign Up. Really jam packed month, and I know a lot of students are really excited to celebrate and just get, reap the benefits of working so hard for the past year. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of Mr. Mulroney? To make point to you. Taking the effort to Ethan. It and the senior class advisors and the, the group of people that have been working on these initiatives where there were many roadblocks, guidelines, safety precautions they needed to adhere to. In the next few days, Mr. Watt and myself worked with Donna McCann in SAC, which is that alluded to we're going to add to some of these student activities and some of the specifics and that'll be put in a, in a parent student newsletter we can appoint that everybody for that gets it to all the school committee members so they you know step by step what um, be expected for you to celebrate our seniors also we were on the phone today with the Director of the Department of Public Health and working with the guidelines from the commissioner, um, we sealed the deal that we will be able to hold our graduation ceremony June 4th, exactly what we did last year, to uh, complement the whole cap and gown ensemble for the graduates. We've put together a, a souvenir mask with the Bro Tech Beer logo. And, 24th, so that it's part of your cap and gown package that you receive. So, all that will be in your packet of information for all the school committee, for all the parents, and on the class of 21 site page with the efforts of. Um, thank you, Edith. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, and best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Um, article nine to the business. A update of the principal's position, uh, Superintendent Electric Watson. I'd like to bring members up to date. 
Thank, thank you, Mr. Toomey. Thank you, members. Uh, as I said uh, in my email to staff today at 2.30, uh, and I mentioned to each of you yesterday, I am thrilled and excited to welcome Mr. Wally Williams back to Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech as the next principal. Um, many of you are uh, know Mr. Williams. Many of our members of our school community know Mr. Williams. He spent five years here as an assistant principal and is familiar with our school, with our students, with our administrators, um, and with the climate and culture that exists at Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech. Um, as we've discussed over the last several weeks, the principal's role um, is shifting at Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech and will be focused on managing and running the day-to-day -day operations of the school district, uh, implementing and carrying out the district initiatives that are created in, towards the mission and, and life of the school. Uh, I have every confidence that Mr. Williams has the ability to lead both his career technical areas and academic areas at Greater New Bedford Volt Tech. And I uh, have met with him personally a few times um, over the last few days. Uh, I'm excited to welcome him back and I have every confidence that he'll be able to carry out uh, the job responsibilities of principal at Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech. So this is my opportunity in, to the committee and the school community to give a heartfelt welcome to Mr. Wally Williams as he returns to Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech as our principal. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Questions of Mr. Watson relative to that position? Good Okay. Hey. Okay, timeline for the Director of Human Resource search. Uh, again, Mr. Watson, would you be so kind? Yes, thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, in your packets, uh, you will find the uh, timeline that exists uh, for the Director of Human Resource position. That job was posted. Uh, applications were collected through May 7th. Uh, we are now underway with a search team that will be getting their work tomorrow in screening and reviewing those applications. Uh, in addition to that, you'll see both the job description in your packet as well as our anticipated timeline. We are envisioning the team reviewing those applications this week and scheduling candidates to be interviewed by our team next week, May 17th through the 21st. At that point, similar to the principal search, the interview team will screen the applicant field down to three or four prospective finalists in which they will then forward those candidates names uh, to me. I will conduct the reference checks, the in basket activities, the final interviews before ho hopefully during the week of May 24th to 28th. And I anticipate uh, making an appointment uh, during the last week, uh, the first week of June, really Memorial Day week. Uh, and come to you guys at our next session on June 8th, if all goes well, uh, with an announcement on who would who would fulfill that role as the director of human resources resources or what the next steps might be for the school district. Are there any questions of Mr. Watson relative to the human resources search? We'll move right along. No, no actions needed on that. Okay, item C, vote to transfer to the transportation reimbursement fund based on time and effort of unexpended on expenditures not to exceed chapter 71 reimbursement amount. Uh, I will ask Mrs. Stewart. She would be so kind as to give us a detailed explanation on this. Thank you. Last year as the committee, you decided to create the regional transportation revolving fund that time with the uncertainty of the fiscal 21 budget, there was a vote to place any unexpended transportation funds into this revolving fund for use in this coming, in this actual fiscal 21 year. I'm requesting that the committee do the same for next fiscal 22, uh, with the same thing that any unexpended transportation funds should be put into this revolving fund for use in fiscal 22 for any unseen expenses that may come up. Motion. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, transfer any unexpended uh, transportation funds. Uh, FY22. Business manager is talking about. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Question. Anyone on the question? All those in favor? Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Okay, next is uh, discussion on sick days for staff on quarantine. 
So, Brian, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, approximately March 10th of the last year, this school and every school in the United States, pretty much around the world, dealt with this pandemic and the COVID situation for all school systems. And in doing so, it was a learning curve for both the committee and this administrative team. We've kept you up to speed month by month of attendance, uh, students that have had to be put on quarantine, how many students have tested positive, how many faculty members have tested positive, and so forth. And part of us being proactive as a team, we kept you up to speed with what other school systems were doing uh, statewide and throughout the country of acknowledging the fact that, for example, um, or in the CBT side and also the academic side, there were times some of our staff members, whether it's paraprofessional and teachers, would come in close contact with the students or a, a group of students, and they would have to be put on quarantine from our lead nurse. And keeping you up to speed, we spoke that we'd begin, uh, continue the conversation this month to acknowledge the fact that we, we have the numbers with Pam, we wouldn't acknowledge, we wouldn't, and do you want to speak on the difference between uh, an outside quarantine with the person as opposed to inside and a little bit of what the numbers, a little bit of numbers might be. Okay, thank you. Um, and when we returned to school in August, the government had the FFCRA program that anyone that needed to quarantine or a two weeks, but really it's a 10 working day period. They were allowed to get paid for the first 10 days. Um, so most of our employees that needed to quarantine between say September 1st and December 31st were covered under the FFCRA program through the government. Um, January 1, that program was not renewed. So employees that needed to quarantine needed to use their own sick time. Um, so this report that Mr. O'Brien is speaking about of numbers is in reference to employees that have had to quarantine using sick time. Now, there are some employees that had to quarantine more than one time because of contacts of employees within the building or students within the building. If they had to quarantine based on their own personal um, actions outside of the building, based on family or friends, that was not um, considered in these numbers because that's on their personal. It wasn't a school inflicted quarantine. Um, not sure if inflicted really is the right word to use. But I have 49 quarantines that people had to use sick time, but there was 42 employees. Like I said, seven employees had to quarantine more than one time, which represents a total of 182 and a half sick days that were used for quarantine. Quarantining I was a total of 31 teachers, which were all CBTE teachers, 10 teaching assistants and one staff member. Um, that's how we get to the 42 employees. It was brought to the committee. Uh, to discuss if these employees really needed to be charged their sick time or if we could be um, not sure which word I want to use, but if we could give them some regard to giving their sick time back to them since it was not something on their own that they were here at work performing their job and they didn't be able to stay to use their sick time since they were here performing their job. Whether it's a, a local collaborative or a comprehensive high school this has been the, the practice, maybe in the earlier months of other institutions, and we felt as a team keeping you informed that we could address the situation this month. Proactive moving forward. It was a little to some of the staff who are, are new employees here and really taxing the, their sick leave time, which is minimal at best. Do you have a motion on that, Mr. O'Brien? Yes. I'd make a motion. Uh, Anybody can supplement or add to it. I make a motion to reinstate any sick time that was used by our employees as a result of, of being in contact with someone as part of the school system. But, okay. And we have a motion made and seconded on the question. Bring nothing on the question. All those in favor? Opposed? So voted. Thank you, very, thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. Okay, next on the agenda is preliminary review of policy BEDH, which is public comment subcommittee meeting. 
This is the first reading. So a motion is ordered to approve, but no discussion will be held at this time. Be held at the next meeting. Motion to approve. Made. Second. Seconded to approve. On the court. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Okay. Vote to designate surplus equipment. Brian or Ms. Okay. The, the surplus that this month is a combination of two departments. Uh, the first, uh, maybe seven or eight items that you'll see on there are items from our fashion design department. We'll be closing. So these are some of the items that the students are not currently using to finish out the year. So they're starting to rearrange the shop and clean it out. And so we need to bring these items to the committee for um, a surplus vote. The next set of, I think it's about maybe 30 to 40 items are all library books that are no longer needed to be used. I'm sorry, not library, ELL books are no longer needed. They've changed the way that the curriculum is running, so they don't need these actual physical books. And we've already verified with the library that Mrs. Pino does not need all of these. So we've made adjustments and she has taken what she would like, and then the rest has been put onto the surplus in the vote of the committee. Make a motion that we work together. Motion made. Second. Second. Made and seconded. All those in favor? Yep. Next is item uh, section 10, report on personnel appointments, retirements. We only have one notification of retirement. And that is Mr. Stephen Walker. Your pleasure. I know. That's what I said. You don't accept it, but he can't leave, right? Well, Mr. O'Brien didn't sign us. Uh, Maria has the original, but I saw it. <laughs> Steve's in a little better shape than me. He, he can catch me. Uh, I, I will say it's a sign of the times. Um, he was a employee, great administrator, great teacher, great coach, great parent. He's um, part of the brick and mortar of this institution. I think part of his farewell due to COVID, he wasn't able to, what I'm going to express now, and I want to show a little card, part of his uh, swan song is he's going to coach. Um, he has intentions of helping out the football team next fall where his son is one of the coaches and we're going to coach together. And uh, I've known for a year that Steve was trying to align everything in them. Uh, I just wish him well. And he's got another year ahead of him. I hope we can put up with Mr. Watson, but <laughs> be a word. I just have to throw it out. He's in Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay, motion be an honor to approve. Made. We have a second. Motion made and seconded. Anything further on the question? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. The communications, informational. Basically, we have a packet of information. The athletics recognition. So, Brian, you must speak. Yes, you may. In your packet this evening is a um, great letter, both uh, Coach Ricky Avila and Coach Collins. This beautiful cover page was done by Mr. Matthew, the director of athletics. It's the preliminary information of uh, who committee is invited Friday, May 28th at 315. It'll be a recognition for both coaches uh, unveiling and retiring their jerseys on both the baseball and softball field like they do for the recitation at uh, Fenway Park. Uh, if you uh, schedule permits, we'd welcome to have you. We'd be able to find the appropriate parking for you. Let's just hope my mother has her rosary beads out that day so we can have some nice weather. Looking forward to the event myself. Mr. Chair, can I take 
Item two, certainly night. Item two in your packet speaks of senior awards night. Senior awards night, uh, we had to adjust the schedule, adjust the location, adjust the date. It was going to be second at 6 p.m. Uh, inviting uh, parents and school committee members to attend the senior awards night on June 2nd, which will be loaded, located in the Z Walter Pediac Fieldhouse. You're welcome to attend. Item three, Mr. Watson, if you could speak on it's the Presidential Award of Excellent Mathematics and Science Teaching of your academic instructors, Lauren Albertine. Sorry, I had my yep. I had myself on mute. I apologize. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, Lauren Arbatine is a finalist for the Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science. Uh, she informed me personally, as well as I received an email. So, uh, really exciting. And at some point in the fall, we should be able to hear uh, how she fared in that endeavor. So that is a, a, an excellent uh, recognition of her efforts uh, on, in our math department, and I applaud her publicly for that and uh, we, we wish her the very best as this uh, heads down the stretch run in the fall. So we'll update the committee at that time. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Thank you. Uh, item four is the Skills USA competition, which Mr. Watt spoke of in the Addison report. This, this information was forwarded to you because it was late to press. Um, I would have had a handful of those students here this evening, but I wanted to recognize um, their awards to the committee. Item five, Mr. Watson, if you could speak on the question and answers on full return of students, please. Yeah, so we received some uh, some question and the, uh, questions from uh, the GNBEU regarding the full return of students. Uh, we took some time with that, a couple of days, uh, had uh, responses written, and we've sent those back out to uh, all of the uh, leadership team at the GNBEU. They did send some follow up questions, which we also answered. But again, I'd like to just uh, stress that uh, I'm happy those questions were asked and answered. And I'm, I'm thrilled of how the return has gone on the first two days. And hopefully we can continue that over the final month of the school year. Mr. Watson, item six is a lot of information from President Frederick Clark from Bridgewater State University. It's an example to this committee of how we were very pro proactive with initiatives with many of the local college and universities. We have built strong relationships with Mass Maritime through our engineering, co-tech, steam engineering students. In this letter, we're working with uh, the Cyber Security Skills Grant with Bridgewater, if accepted, with our Infotech legal protective students and uh, engineering students. I just wanted to make a point. We uh, will continue those initiatives moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Motion be in order to accept the communications. Aiden second, for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted on the committee discussion. Is there any committee discussion? Yeah, I just want to um, publicly thank you. <laughs> want to publicly thank um, chair and our vice chair, especially this year. It's been a trying year for everybody. You guys have worked tremendously hard, more so than since I've been here and dealing with all the different things and every single day phone calls and it's taking place and I, I truly all your hard work this year, especially this year. Thank you. We have practices every night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, on the yeah. Okay, item 13 of the of the business. Uh, basically, the only thing I'd like to say is that I will be forming uh, new uh, committees. Anybody that's interested in serving under any particular committee, see me after the meeting, set it up. It's basically the budget, payroll, warrant committee, policy committee, SMEC board, and superintendent evaluation committee. 
anybody's interested in serving on those nominate you if not draft these draft these I'm drafting okay any other car anything else needs to come up hearing nothing else uh, at this time committee will be adjourning into executive session on the chapter 30 section 21 to discuss strategy with respect to the collective bargaining with the teacher union members will not be returning to regular session motion will be in order to adjourn to executive session make a motion we adjourn to executive session second made a second and roll call vote Walsh? yes Lavera? yes Barrow? Yes. Hurricane? Yes. Yeah. Motion carries six to nothing. Thank you very much. We will now adjourn into executive session.